Easter Island isn't the only place in the world with some mysterious stone faces. In the highest peak of the Eastern Taurus mountain range in Turkey lies Nemrut Da. Nemrut Da is a temple tomb believed to be built by the late Hellenistic king Antiochus. He reigned from 69 to 34 BC and built the temple to commemorate himself. The monument features statues of the king, lions, eagles, and various Greek, Armenian, and Medes gods, with each measuring almost 30 feet tall. The heads of these sculptures once sat atop their stone bodies, but at some point in time, they were removed. Nemrut Da went lost to memory until it was rediscovered by a geologist in 1881. And in 1987, it was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And while there are those that believe these figures hold a deep mythological significance, how these stone structures were physically constructed without modern tools is a mystery. At first glance, visitors may not realize that inside this mosque is a multicolored secret. Located in Iran, the Nasser al muk Mosque is commonly known as the Pink Mosque due to the rose-colored tiles that cover the interior. However, this is far from the only color found inside. A wall of stained glass windows turns the interior into a rainbow wonderland. Built in 1888, the mosque took 12 years to complete. Nasir al muk features plenty of traditional Islamic architecture elements, such as the arches and the central structure. However, the presence of stained glass windows, a design element relatively rare for mosques, makes this particular mosque a unique and stunning sight to see. The stained glass in Nasir al muk was built to catch the morning sunlight as it reflects off the walls and the brightly colored Persian rugs on the floor. The hope and intention was for the colors to create a peaceful atmosphere during early morning prayer. The Nasir al muk Mosque has become as much of a destination for visitors seeking the perfect photo as those who still worship under the rainbow of light. In the Turkish region of Cappadocia, hidden in the hollowed rocks, lie some of the oldest Christian churches in the world. The Gorham Open Air Museum is a cluster of monasteries and churches dating all the way back to the 4th century. 2.6 million years ago, a volcanic eruption of the nearby Mount Urshais resulted in the formation of mushroom-shaped fairy chimneys. Each church that makes up the Gorham Open Air Museum is housed within a separate soft rock cave. More than 10 churches make up the museum. Inside each church are wall paintings known as frescoes, examples of old classics from the Byzantine art period. These incredible paintings have managed to retain their clarity and colors throughout the years, thanks to frequent restorations. In 1984, the Gorham Open Air Museum became one of the first two sites in Turkey to be designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. But it's the museum's extensive history and unique structures that have made it one of Cappadocia's most visited attractions. When it's come to Iraq, people from outside, the first image they get, war, bloodshed, kidnapping, suicide bombing. All this violence you get through the media, in the reality is not like that. The beauty of Upper Tigris is, is, is breathtaking. It reminds you the Garden of Eden. My name is Nabil Musa, and I am a waterkeeper. Waterkeeper is the voice for rivers. Our mission is keeping our waterways swimmable, fishable, drinkable. I am the first waterkeeper in the Middle East. I spent most of my childhood by, by the river, catching fish, playing with frogs, and chasing dragonfly. I have some beautiful memories and I want to bring them back. The problems in, in, in Upper Tigris River, dams, urban waste, gravel mine, oil refinery and oil wells, garbage from picnickers. My current mission is educating people, outreach, raising awareness, 
and water quality monitoring. When the water gets polluted, find out how did that happen, where's the polluter. I meet a lot of people uh, when I'm paddling. Some people, they are positive, some people, they are negative. They tell me, you are trying to, you know, stop all this pollution. We've been having them for, for years and years. But our rivers are our lifeblood. And if we don't protect them, our life is not going to be safe. I want to raise awareness and tell next generation action need to be taken. I want to people to go to nature more, appreciate the water more and to protect it. I have a right to protect this water. It's my water. It's everybody's water. So I am hopeful. I am hopeful about the future of Iraq and Kurdistan. Yes, we will get it. Located in Yemen is a palace that appears to have been carved from the rock that it sits on. However, this man-made wonder was once just a simple summer home. Just 10 miles away from Yemen's capital city of Sana'a is Dar al Hajar, otherwise known as Iman's Rock Palace. In the early days of Yemen's history, the country was led by the Imam, the Islamic spiritual leader, rather than a king or president. The Rock Palace was built in the 1930s by Imam Yaha as his summer residence. However, it is believed to have been built over an older palace. The residence is five stories high, has several balconies, and its own water supply from a deep well. It is seen as an example of traditional Yemen architecture due to the patterned windows earth tone colouring and protruding exterior decorations. While tourism in this region is limited due to conflict, this palace is both a sanctuary for locals and an example of the man-made beauty of Yemen. Just across the border from war-torn Syria, in a forgotten city, is an unexpected site. The Hotel Palmyra. This hotel is different than others uh, because time has washed away the walls. Time has left its impact. It is, it is a journey into the past. So many people have passed through this hotel. This hotel has been here since 1874, and this is why we try to keep it as it is. The city of Baalbek has changed, of course. It's feeling the impact of the war on one side of the borders, but it's also feeling the effects of economic depression uh, that's affecting the whole country. At one point, there were no visitors to speak of, and that was very difficult. The hotel used to be a haven for visitors because of the ancient Roman ruins just outside its doors. It is a constant reminder of me of the importance of Baalbek. And this is something that was not accidentally built here. If I wanted to describe the view in front of me daily when I look out of the window, when I come to the hotel, I'd be speechless. And generally, it's hard for me to be speechless. The smell of this hotel is of carpets, uh, old walls and uh, rusty um, faucets. But that makes you smile. And this is, I think, essentially what memories are all about. The old personnel that has been here since the 50s and some some of the 60s have stayed with us because to them it's home. And this is the feeling that keeps them going, even with tourism dwindling in this region. We've never closed the doors of the hotel. No one has a right to touch Hotel Palmyra uh, except for time. Deep inside the Greco-Roman city of Hierapolis lies the most relaxing and the most visited site in all of Turkey. From a distance, Parmukarle's cascading white pools seem to resemble a castle of fluffy cotton. 
But upon closer inspection, they reveal themselves to be solid limestone walls housing turquoise mineral-rich water. The site is fittingly called Parmukarle, which translates to cotton castle in Turkish. Housing 17 hot springs, they each range in temperature from 35 degrees to 100 degrees, perfect for soaking in. Parmukale has been used as a natural bathing spot for centuries, especially since the water in each hot spring is filled with minerals. It was the Greek and Romans who discovered that these minerals potentially hold countless curative properties. According to many, the water brings benefits to the skin, eyes, and can assist with recovery from high blood pressure, making this cotton castle a very relaxing place to visit.